know, even though in you know feature films, obviously there's a lot of women in them because you know we make up half the world. But with you know most of the scripts being written by women, uh, I mean by men, <laughs> um, you know whatever women are saying on screen is usually sort of you know men's words shoved into their mouths, and you know and they're being seen through a lens that a dude is sitting behind. Um, so sort of the perspective and and. It's just very male, period. Um, so it's it's really film is such a powerful medium, and I think it's you know at, specifically in this moment in time, it's the legacy that we leave behind. Sort of what was it like to be alive in this period in time? And I think if there aren't uh, female writers and directors in in Hollywood, um, I think we're going to leave behind a very skewed message um, and we'd best be putting some some women behind there so that um, the stories that get out are truly our stories you know and in terms of my heads of department four out of six of those um, slots were filled by women and not just because they're women but because they were bloody good so yes what she did by giving voice to um, that graphic language was to uh, actually speak to the, the millions of women who were unable to speak because it was so shameful and degrading and humiliating for a way many women, you know, labored in, in the dark. Because she took a veracity test, passed with flying Nine colors. colors. Yes, she, she wasn't on trial, but they treated her as if she were on trial. It was so bizarre that she had to actually be subjected to a polygraph test. And he wouldn't take a veracity. Well, they didn't ask him to, but, you know, it wasn't raised. But why Did she refuse it? I wasn't. It, I don't think it was posed as a question to My me. research says. Oh no. yeah, really? Okay. okay. <laughs> well, that and then she had it. You know. <laughs> anyway, it's an interesting story about how one person, a woman, really stood up for the truth and was fearless. But then, you know, the rest of the story is uh, what she suffered. What, what she, the consequences of speaking the truth for. What she loves it. She uh, likes the spotlight being oh. thrown back on her. I think she's. Um, she, you know, she may know she's a professor of law and public policy and women's studies at Brandeis, and she deals with young people. And she realizes, you know, they're texting and they're, you know, basically visual media is how we, how they communicate. She feels, and that's why she felt this film, a film, would help, you know, get across the ideas that she she has really stood for for the last 20 years. I mean, she really was not an activist at all. I mean, she's really a I call, you know, she was interested in contract and commercial law, that's what she was doing, and I mean, she, she was not an activist. And this is, of course, if you look at the film, this is what they tried to paint her, to be a scorned woman, an activist, you know, a crazy a lady. Boozy. A crazy lady, you know. The family that I filmed in the, in the film, they're an indigenous family, and I'm not even sure if two or three years from now, they will be where they are today. Um, to all around them, the forests have been cut down. But I think that struggle is going to go on for just a little bit more before people can't take it anymore. You know, before they have nowhere else to go, and then it's going to be it's going to be a revolution. <laughs> and what I would say we had this tremendous opportunity to um, be invited to a uh, rigorous private school in New York City. Uh, with the Dalton School, the Dalton School, um, and we were part of this uh, diversity initiative that they uh, were engaging in, and we just we took this ride uh, with many hopes and aspirations, um, and were eventually confronted with what is part of this national crisis around the achievement gap in education, and specifically how it reflects uh, with our our African American boys. And we thought that we were immune from that as middle class families. Both families were in the families. I think I just want to point out, uh, you know, in this festival, which had, when I counted last night, 37 females in this festival, also had 29 African American films. Again, uh, another parity uh, milestone, I think, that was reached up here.